Hey guys, Turk here. Hope you're having a great day. Man, we are less than a week away from the RX 6000 announcement and sure enough, the hype train, it's in full effect. We've seen leaks from all across the internet. I've seen uh, boost clocks of 2.57 gigahertz. I've seen TDPs of like 255 watts. Things are getting really crazy out there and they're not making a lot of sense. So in today's video, I wanted to circle back to the original Moore's Law's dead leaks and I wanted to see if I could connect the dots with the latest Cortex leaks and see if we can get our fingers and a common thread of knowledge on the three graphics cards that are supposedly going to drop in the announcement this week. And in pure Turk fashion, we're also going to be using our performance per watt calculations, and we're going to see if we can expect what we should see from these cards going into next week. So let's keep this video short and sweet and get straight to it. Now, right at the top of the video, if y'all are interested in some of my previous calculations, I've got a playlist down below. Y'all can look at that in your own time, but today we're purely going to be looking at the RDNA 1 based performance per watt calculations. We're going to be using that format in order to extrapolate the expected performance from these three graphics cards that we should expect next week. That's the 6900 XT, the 6800 XT, and the 6800. Now, when we go back to Moore's Law's Dead's original video, he put out a bunch of different uh, ranges of clock speeds, compute units, memory capacities, as well as power wattage that we should expect from these graphics cards. And as you walk through those different uh, specs like we did in a previous video, sure enough, most of these cards line up pretty closely with the Cortex leaks. So we're going to go through each of these cards and list out what the specs going to be. So let's start off with the king of the castle, and that's the 6900 XT. Now, Moore's Law's Dead originally said the boost clock speed was going to be between 2100 and 2300, and I think given the RTX's you know, pitfalls, AMD decided to boost it up a little bit, and they're going to be going for that top tier boost clock speed. And sure enough, the Cortex leaks confirm that, which gives us a good starting point for the rest of the discussions today. If we keep going down the stack, we also see the 80 compute units is confirmed, and then the TDP is also confirmed. Now, we did get a curveball this past week when it comes to power, and with this specification, it is the pure TDP, which is the thermal design parameter, and that is the core of the graphics card itself. It does not include the memory or anything. So I took the Igor's lab calculations and tried to figure out both the total graphics power and the total board power. That way I could extrapolate into the performance per watt model that we've used in our previous video. <laughs> Long story short, both of these leaks both line up to about a 360 watt total board power, excuse me, uh, graphics card, which does sound pretty beefy, but if you actually look at it, the performance we're expecting out of this card is pretty high, so it should demand a pretty high wattage as well. So the second card that's going to be arguably displayed at the announcement is going to be the 6800 XT. Now, there's been a lot of rumors out on the internet that the card we saw at the Zen 3 announcement was the 6800 XT, and we've, we've got some performance numbers to compare against later, but for now, let's just focus on the spec. Now, both of these sources for the leaks are confirming that it's going to be a 72-watt card with still a pretty aggressive boost clock speed. Again, these are all reference cards, by the way. AIBs are welcome to buy whatever GPU they want and boost it up as much as they want. We're only talking reference here. But Cortex is going for a 2275 megahertz boost clock, whereas I think the Moore's Law is dead was going with a 2300 megahertz. So we're still within 25 megahertz. Uh, the teraflops, again, we're still within 0.3 teraflops, which is arguably nothing when you look at the grand scheme of things. And then sure enough, the TBP, the total board power when it's all said and done, right at 320 watts. So it doesn't line up with some of the uh, information I've been getting from some of you guys that we're going to get a 300 watt TBP card, but it's still relatively close. And when you compare it to the R RTX 3080, it's still a pretty good value. Again, more efficiency numbers, check them out if you want. Now, the last card that's arguably up for display is going to be the 6800, and this is going to be a 64 compute unit card based on Cortex, which, you know, four compute units, it's not that big of a deal in the grand scheme of things. So I think we can give Moore's Law a pass in this regard, but still the frequencies are right on top of each other. Uh, 2150 for a boost clock, base clocks. I basically calculated this as 80% of the boost clock, and we are still looking pretty with both of these uh, sources lining up pretty well. The total board powers are also lining up really nice. 
And of course, the performance per watt, uh, this is basically taking the TDP, the actual uh, graphics core power. Uh, they're all lining up with the 50% we've been you know, talking about for like the past three weeks. So overall, I think all three of these graphics cards are in a pretty good position and you know, I'm, I might be jumping on the bandwagon. I'm still not on board with as high of clock speeds, but given the power usage that's un being utilized here, I think we've got a pretty good uh, stake in the ground when it comes to looking at performance. Now that we've got the specs out of the way, let's take a look at the scaling factor charts we came up with in last week's video. Now, if you're confused on how these figures are calculated, definitely hit pause and check out that video. It's definitely worth the watch and will help you with understanding everything going forward. So if we take the total board powers for the three different graphics cards, Cards today we get for the 6900 XT right around 365 watts the 6800 XT at 320 watts and the 6800 is going to come in right around 285 now the blue line there is going to be our 60% performance per watt improvement orange is going to be the the 50% is going to be the design target that the uh, AMD has been going with and then we went with a pessimistic gray 40% for the performance per watt and sure enough if you take the 5700 XT as the reference here we do definitely expect around a two times performance improvement with the 6800 XT and that 6900 XT if we are to believe these figures it's going to come in sitting pretty almost two and a half times as, as powerful so let's take all of these numbers and plug them into our performance per watt tables in order to see what our expected frames per second are going to be for each of these graphics cards the first chart we're going to look at is strictly looking at the 6800 graphics cards, mainly so we don't have a lot of different cards up. And we're only going to focus on Borderlands 3, Gears 5, as well as the 14 game average that we got from Hardware Unboxed. And sure enough, with Borderlands 3, our old 300 watt card in gray there, it is lining right up with the RTX 3080, which is still expected. And shockingly here, the big Navi actual card that they showed at the Zen 3 event, it's lining up perfectly with our 6800 XT performance per watt calculation we made today with today's latest leaks. So thumbs up there. And sure enough, the 6800, it is actually performing really well in this particular game. Of course, this is at 4K. I think this is using like the... Uh, the absolute maximum it's not ultra but whatever the other one is uh, for all these different games so keep that in mind you know if you're playing 1440p you know you're gonna be in good shape across the board moving down to gears 5 this is where our model starts to break down quite a bit uh, it could be due to you know gears 5 not scaling well with DirectX 12 with higher frequencies but still, you know, we've got that actual data that compares against the RTX 3080. So all of our different models are coming ahead of that. So I really do think we are in good shape for this game. And then this is where the rubber meets the road. This is the 14 game average. Again, our 300 watt card we calculated last week matches the RTX 3080. And then the big Navi actual card, uh, I went ahead and did some creative math here to kind of estimate what an actual value would be. It is still lining up with the 6800 XT, which guys, this is proof positive that the card we saw at the Zen 3 event is confirmed. That is the 6800 XT. It is not the top end card. So uh, for you guys that commented in my last video saying it wasn't, thumbs up to you guys. You know, good guessing there. And another surprising thing here, guys, the 6800, though it's not all the way up as high as the other cards, I really do think it's going to be a strong contender when it comes to the RTX 3070 that's going to be hitting the hitting the roadmap here shortly. So now let's take a look at the top tier cards. This is going to be the RTX 3090 and the 6900 XT. Still the same game, still the same resolutions. Let's get going. All right, so the green bar there is the RTX 3090, and sure enough, it is the leader of the pack when it comes to Borderlands 3. It's beating out the RTX 3080 handsomely, as well as the big Navi that was shown at the Zen 3 event. But guys, if our 6900 XT leaks come out the way we like and the performance per watt is accurate, we've got a potential 3090 competitor here, which is awesome. Again, Gears 5, I'm not as convinced that our methodology here is as sound, but again, our models are lining up roughly around the same ballpark as the actual gameplay card. And then going to the 14 game average, everything's looking really rosy here, guys. Things are so optimistic. The RTX 3090 is being beaten by the RX 6900 XT. 
I don't know how accurate that's going to be going into next week. So we'll definitely need to see some more numbers from AMD as well as external third party reviewers. I'm definitely going to try and get my hands on this card so that I can compare what I'm estimating against what the real life is. All right. So we've confirmed the good news here, guys, and everything's looking rosy. All the leaks are matching up in line with the predictions that we've been making for the longest time. Here's the bad news. If you look at Cortex's actual article he wrote and he lists all of his specs, there's one particular paragraph in there that's got me worried. And that is he expects that the RX 6800 XT is between 50% and 55% faster than the 5700 XT. Now that's why I've included it on this chart specifically. If you want to look at that 14 game average, it's right around 55 FPS. If you only add 50% of that, you are nowhere close to any of these graphics cards that are on there. Heck, if you even look at some of my old predictions, those are even faster than what's being stated. So, you know, I've actually asked him on Twitter how certain he is of this value and he's, he's standing up to it. So, you know, take that for what it's worth, guys. I, I honestly don't think that 50% number is correct. And if it is, that does spell some doom and gloom for this launch. But then the actual card is actually faster than that. So it's like, I, I don't trust that number but I wanted to put that out there and make sure you guys were aware of it just so you're not getting sticker shock when we come into Wednesday. All right, so guys, we have gone full circle. We've taken the original leaks from Moore's Law's Dead with our super duper conservative uh, FPS estimations, and we've gone all the way to the latest leaks with the latest performance models. And I have been consistent from day one with these videos. The, Ry the Ryzen, the Radeon 6000 series graphics cards will be competitive with the RTX 3080. I have no doubt about it. I think AMD's got what it takes to put it up and now it's really up to them to show it. The only concerns I've got, of course, are gonna be ray tracing as well as a DLSS competitor, but I think as long as they're able to put these kinds of FPS numbers in front of the market and then have some sort of solution that's, you know, quote, better than touring, we've heard that a lot of times now, I think a lot of people will be able to jump to Team Red for a graphics card because let's be honest, the 5700 XT was a decent card, but we really want to see what AMD's got, what it takes. So guys, I have loved making these videos and I think this is going to be my last uh, Radeon GPU video, at least for the 6000 series. We're going to be covering Zen 3 here in a couple weeks. So make sure you hit subscribe, hit the bell icon. I've got that launch video ready to rock. It's just got to get rendered and all that other stuff. So make sure you stay to the channel. But until then, guys, hope you all have a great one. We'll catch you on Wednesday because that's when all of our dreams come true. Take care.